welcome back to my channel um or welcome to my channel today i've got a video for all the uni people freshers especially if you're moving into uni first of all congratulations on your a-level results if you got the results you wanted well done if you didn't it's all good you know there's clearing there's other options and you know you're gonna make it in the end don't worry about it but if you've now gotten into uni and maybe you didn't get university accommodation the next thing you're thinking about is where i'm gonna live especially if you're not in a town that is close to where you live originally so the first things i'm gonna i've got a couple of points that i'm gonna share with you that i wish i had when i was looking for accommodation because i remember being so lost but the first thing i'm gonna say that you do is research so research the area that you want to live in research where your university campus is based how far do you want to live from university do you want to commute are you willing to do long walks in the daytime how safe is the area you want to look into say for example you've got a university hub that's closer to university but slightly more expensive or one that's a bit further out if you don't mind living further out are you willing to pay the bus travel or the travel ticket what's the price of travel in that area do you end up budgeting and it making more sense to pay a little bit more rent than paying so much on travel as well so look into things like that also look into like students opinions go and google search student room go on facebook groups just ask people questions about what it's like living in the area things to look out for what you should prepare for just research as much as you can before you move to another town or city okay my next point is money and budgeting so you want to make sure that you've thought about costs and how much you're willing to spend on rent how much are you getting in from student finance do you have a part-time job have you you know maybe worked out a transfer for your job or you're going to look for a job finding jobs in university towns is not always the easiest because there's loads of students looking for jobs so you know think about how much you're willing to spend and don't come with the idea that oh, i'm going to get a job and balance it out because it might be harder for you to find a job than you think so working out how much you're going to be spending monthly weekly or maybe you travel or you're living work out all your budgeting and also you need to save for things like deposits so a deposit is what you pay down for a house before you move in just to make sure that you're covered like for damages and just to between you and the landlord or agency just to make sure that everything's fine and they can be a bit expensive so start planning money wise and prepare because it's more expensive than you think my next one is checking the prices when you go on websites such as zoopla or right move or whatever website is that you use to find your accommodation the weekly prices can be a little bit misleading so say for example you saw a house that was 110 pounds a week you've calculated now in your brain that it's um 440 pounds for a month however that's not how the agencies calculate it they usually calculate it um the weekly price times the number of weeks in the year divided by months in the year so if you instead of paying 440 you'd be paying around 480 pounds so it's always good to check the prices monthly rather than weekly because then you can budget per month rather than per week because per week can be a little bit misleading and you need a little bit more money than you think also check in prices of you know houses in the area make sure you're not being overpriced because sometimes they do take advantage especially when you're in your first year and you don't know how houses or housing is in that area the prices can be really high so do you, sometimes it's okay to wait a little bit before you you know go into paying a lot of money and spending so much money on rent and bills bills is another one because a lot of houses don't offer bills and then you end up spending you know another extra 70 80 pounds on bills or 60 pounds on bills when you could have gotten a bills included and then you use as much as you like without getting an extra charge at the end so research prices and housemates so now that you've you know decided how much you want to spend um what area you're trying to live in you're thinking i don't know anyone in this area how am i going to find housemates so the best way is through social media really join facebook groups twitter your societies that you're looking at joining just talk to as many people as you can online interact with them you'll probably find people who are in the same situation as you looking for housing and looking for housemates and then also think about how many people do you want to live with do you want to live with like eight people because some houses you know you can live up to eight to ten people or six people or four people i personally find that the less people i live with the better for me my first year i lived with six people which was really good they were all nice people however it is harder to keep on top of cleaning when there are more of you um, this year I've lived with four people, or the four of us in total, and the last year was six of us in total, and it's a lot cleaner compared to like my other house, even though my other house was still relatively clean, this year has been cleaner in general. And then my next house I'm going to be living with two other people, so three people. I personally prefer to live with less people, so think about the number of people you want to live with. Um, you know, it might sound fun to live with eight to ten people, but 
who's clean in the kitchen or who's clean in the bathroom is a, is a real discussion. So look into housemates carefully. Also look into their profiles, their Facebook pages, ask their interests because it's great when you have people who are different, but you don't want someone who's something that you're against. Say for example, you're not into cats and then another person has a cat and they're bringing it to the house. You know, that's something that you might want to consider. So look into housemates properly, talk to as many people as you can, be really friendly. Um, everyone's in the same position as you, so everyone's just as eager and friendly, open to making friends. So have fun with that. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is private, um, private landlords, agencies, guarantors, things like that. So when you are moving into a new house, you're either gonna be going through the agency route, so it's an agency or a company that helps you find a house or they deal with all the stuff rather than you having to go directly to your landlords. Or you can have a private landlord who, you know, you talk to directly, who works on the house and makes sure everything's okay. Um, there are pros and cons to both of them. I personally have dealt with agencies how the agency sometimes can be a bit of a rip off, they don't really care, but you know, it's, it is what it is. I just think I feel more protected in an agency agreement rather than with a direct landlord, because sometimes they aren't as quick to respond to situations. Also a guarantor. So a guarantor is someone that is basically vouching for you that you're gonna pay your rent. So if you have to pay, I don't know, 6,000 pounds within the 12 months that you're gonna be staying at the house or 11 months you're gonna be staying at the house, the agency usually requires someone to say that you're going to pay this, but if you don't pay this, they're gonna come back to your guarantor to make sure that they get their money. So if you don't have a guarantor, there are other websites that you can use, I think. I'll have a look and I'll, if I find it, I'll put it in the description box, but there's um, a scheme where you can go online and pay someone else to be your guarantor. And some agencies take that, some agencies don't take that. So do have a look before you go into looking for a house because the worst thing is thinking you found a house, you found your house mate, but now you need a guarantor and you don't have one. Um, that can be really stressful so make sure you find a guarantor or if you have a guarantor you know start preparing get the documents ready scanning and stuff like that the next point I have is don't lose hope um, because I know it can be really stressful I was in that situation I thought I wasn't gonna have a house to live in and I was like oh my god I need to get to uni and realistically I could have traveled for the first couple of weeks but I didn't luckily I got a house and it was all good but there are people who do travel for a bit until they find a house and the truth is people will be looking for housemates till like December or even throughout the whole year because sometimes you might have a situation where there are supposed to be four of you moving in but one person's unable to do that. In my situation that happened to me this year, like I had a housemate who was supposed to move in, unfortunately she couldn't move in and then we had to look for another housemate. So you will find people who are constantly posting like, hi, we're looking for one person, this is the rent, this is the situation. So if you're unable to sort yourself out within those first couple of weeks or the first month of university and you live close enough to travel then don't be worried about traveling you can always sort yourself out a little bit later um i hope this video has been helpful i've it's i try to keep it short and quick so that you can get your points and start doing your searches good luck with university if you want to hear more about my university experience let me know i'm willing to do more videos about uni i think it's been good i'm currently going into my third year so i guess i've had two years of experience here um, and i hope to talk to you guys soon and see you later bye